Okay, video number 127, because video number 126 did not upload, it's still in my phone, so I'll try to get it to upload again in a little while, but in the meantime, this is video 127, uh, this is the end of the Easter day, and I thought I better make some mental notes, just so I have it on video, what my thought process is, if I ever need to go back to what is going to happen the forward bulkhead the one piece was the last part i took out of a three-piece bulkhead and i thought it would be nice to make that one piece all the way across instead of three pieces and it would be nice but it won't fit it's just not going to work so instead of a three-piece bulkhead i think i'm going to try to go with a two-piece bulkhead i think i'm going to make it all in one big sheet and then cut it in half and see if i can make it go in if i can't make it go in then i'll cut the center section off of both of them and i'll go back to a three-piece bulkhead but i want to keep the pieces down to a minimum uh as best i can and uh we'll see how good my scab work comes um and go from there but uh, I'd like to keep it as one piece if I can and then find a way to bond it together, uh, whether it be PL glue or peanut butter or, or, you know, whatever it takes. But in the meantime, that being said, that's the that plan. Um, my daughter and granddaughter stopped by the shop, and I told anybody who was going to go from my town to any town to shop or whatever uh check and see if i'm at the shop and if you are please bring me my tote full of chemicals that i had in my house so they would not um they would not um get frozen over the winter um i got cans of paint and i've got gel coats gallons of gel coat and gallons of resin i didn't know what I, I couldn't remember what all i still had in there for some reason i had it in my head that i was down to one gallon of resin and i'm not i got three full gallons of resin and a quarter left over so i'm at three and a quarter gallons of resin <coughs> excuse me and that's a good thing because this boat is still a long way from getting fiberglass yet the temperatures are coming around soon. Right now, I got it in the shop over 60 degrees now. You have no idea how tempted I was to throw down a piece or two of, uh, of fiberglass, but I really don't want to smell the stuff yet. As much work as I've got left on the boat, there's no reason to go there yet, but I have product. Now, the question was, can that product freeze and still be used? And... Um, I don't want it to freeze. That's why I was putting it off forever. But for whatever reason, April has taken forever to get above freezing in North Dakota. And I don't know how cold it's going to get in here inside the shop. I know heat rises and I've got all the chemicals up on the boat. So it's up where most of the heat is in here. And is, I would like to see it stay above 32 degrees in here just so I know it never froze. However, um, it may not be a concern because I have that one quarter gallon of resin that I left in this boat over in this shop over the winter as a test. And I just popped the top on it and it still looks like regular old resin. And um, I would love to know more about this, but when I look for storage temperature uh, ranges for gel coats and resins online I see nothing and when I read the the uh, uh, jugs I see nothing but uh, application temperatures nothing on storage temperature extremes so that being said one of those jugs that quarter that I have uh, is my test jug I know it's been through every temperature range the shop's been through with no heat on all winter long the stuff that they just brought down i can take the cans of spray paint on the road with me but i can't take the four gallons of uh resin and um gel coat well five gallons i guess it would be i got two gallons of gel coat and three gallons of resin full jugs never opened i can't take that in my semi with me so that being said that's going to stay in this shop 
Temperatures at night, I'm still seeing in the high teens on a couple nights. Uh, definitely above freezing most of the days. And for that reason, I don't know what the shop's going to do. The shop may never get below freezing. It may stay above freezing. Um, it may briefly get below freezing, then come back up above freezing. It may get below freezing, but only by 5 or 10 degrees and stay there for two days. I don't know. I mean, I'm just not going to be here to know that. I know it's not going to be sub below zero. And uh, therefore, I went ahead and took a chance and asked them to bring it down. I got it in the shop. And I'm going to uh, leave it in here and go from there. I ordered some other stuff. This is one of two supply things that I wanted to get in the shop before I got too far down the line. And I've got one of the two. The other one is... Uh, at a friend of mine's house that I had UPS order and drop off there. And that is um, some AdTech P14 filler that I can use to patch areas on the boat along with other various different patch options. Uh, but I wanted a gallon of that filler for the whole boat because i got plenty of areas that I know I can use it on. Um, the other one was micro balloons and I ordered some micro balloons uh, because I already got the cabasil and well the, the I said micro balloons the, I think that's the cabasil I'm not sure I can't remember which one's which one of them is actual uh, little glass spheres little glass balls and you mix that in to make your own fairing compound out of resins. And I thought it would be a good idea, as much patchwork as I've got, to have that on hand. So I know those two were ordered. I also ordered some bulk styrene wax. I'm not talking gallons. I'm talking, you know, uh, uh, I can't remember, but it was a jug of it. I can't remember how big it is, but it might be a pint or half a pint or whatever it was. That stuff goes pretty far. Um, and that's to mix in with my gel coats on an as-needed basis and my resins on an as-needed basis. So I, hopefully I don't have as much curing issues as I had last year. And I can't remember if I ordered any more fiberglass resin. If I did, it was two more jugs. If I did not, then I will need more before I get farther down the line. If I did, then that would give me a total of five jugs, five, and a, well, five gallons and a quarter on hand. And that, the, you know, once both of those orders are in this shop, and if I did in fact order that, and it's sitting out there. It's been a while since I placed that order, so I don't remember if I ordered it or not. I know I intended to. I just don't know if I did it or not. Um, I'll know when that gets here. But if both of those orders are in my possession by June 1st, then fiberglassing is going to be going full steam ahead. Um, will I need more? Probably. Will I need more gel coats? Yes, I want to get the neutral gel coats because I ordered my uh, gel coat tint for the blue. And um, the two gallons of white, I don't think will do the whole boat. I think most of that will be used inside the boat, so I may still need some more white. Um, and that being said, the, uh, the the neutrals will be for mixing and things like that. So um, there is some more ordering that has to be done on top of what I've already got. But it's not a lot. I'm close. I'm real close. Um, I just need to go out and get that and see if I got it. And it'll be mid-May, late May before I worry about getting that one in. When that gets here, though, I, I will have a clue what I have on hand. I'll have enough to get started. And I'll have some more resin that I will probably need to order before the season is out. And I'll have um, what I already have on hand, and I'll need to order gel coat before I can actually get, in, get around to gel coating the boat. <coughs> that being said... Fiberglass. I've got fiberglass on hand. Don't know how far it will go. Don't want to have a lot of extra when this is done. So I'm going to use what I got. And as I get closer to being out of fiberglass, I'll take a look at what's left on the project and I'll make a guesstimation and probably make another order of fiberglass before the summer's over. And that being said, 
Um, I bought a hot glue gun. Every bit of that wood you see up there, I thought I was going to be able to use it for forms. I, not really. It, it didn't come out the way I wanted it to come out. And therefore, I'm going to make uh, my own uh, forms out of tongue depressors and hot glue. And I have some tongue depressors on hand that I bought in uh, somewhere along the line. I, and I wish I could remember where I bought them. With all this coronavirus stuff going on, don't know if I can get tongue depressors any more than if I could get face masks. I don't know. Uh, I just know that I got the hot glue gun out tonight. It's the first time I ever had one in my hands. Glued three pieces together. See how nice and easy it is to work with. And know when I look over here at my shelf, I don't have enough. I need more. I need a lot more if I'm actually going to make every form up there out of hot glue and tongue depressors and if i can't make it out of hot glue and tongue depressors then i'll have to go find another very light very thin uh form of wood uh, and just see what i can find out there but uh tomorrow i'm needing to go to town with my new uh my new mask that my daughter brought me um she apparently had ordered some off ebay for the ambulance service and had uh, plenty and brought me one. <laughs> so tomorrow, me and my mask are going to run around Grand Forks and uh, see if we can't get us a eight foot step ladder, possibly some plywood. Uh, I do need plywood to start this project, but since I'm already going to be in the store to get the ladder, I kind of like to get everything while I'm in there so I don't have to do a lot of running around in there. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and get my plywood, a couple two befores, and uh, get some plywood, a couple two befores, and the step ladder. And then I need some Ziploc bags. I got to get that. And then I'm going to go looking for parts for my air compressor so I can mount my hose reel, hook up my hose reel, mount my hose reel. And that's going to be on the trailer. That box up there has my air dryer in it, and I got another hose reel and. That those two will probably go hand in hand somewhere in this shop. I haven't made a decision on that yet, but the compressor and the hose reel is going to be outside with a drain on the uh, re with the regulator and a drain on the uh, tank of the air compressor, and that hose will, reel will be run inside to be hooked up to the air dryer wherever I decide to mount it without mounting it in you know against this guy's shop. I'm not going to bolt it to anything of his um and then that hose reel will be point of use it'll uh that will have a regulator inside and there's a regulator outside there's a drain valve outside instead of a time drain or a timed purge i'll just have a manual drain and go out there and drain it once in a while then i'll have some distance from that to this air dryer for cooling so that the air dryer hopefully will function better and then I'll have a point of use uh, hose reel in here when it comes time to spray gel coats and uh, run a sandblaster. May try to run the sandblaster all outside without the air dryer and just see how things go. Um, and if moisture becomes an issue, then I'll run it through my air dryer. But it's been fun. Um, I'm going to call it the night and relax here a little bit. Enjoy my heated shop and... Uh, watch some TV and get ready to get up in the morning and get after it. And then uh, I got a lot of wood up there I need to cut up and bag up. That may be tomorrow's project after I get done shopping. I got a lot of uh, prep work as far as sanding inside the hall on the front where I took all that wood out today before I could ever get to form making forms uh, or um, cutting wood for the forms or applying resins and waterproofing the wood and you know there's a lot of things to do up here that starts with getting the sanders out getting the cutting tools out and spending some time up there just cleaning up the mess where i took off the wood getting the hall sanded out so that it can receive the fiberglass tabbing and things like that all of that being said, that's where this boat project's at. I uh, really 
I can't remember the last time I had a three-day weekend, but I'm really enjoying the fact that I actually got something done this weekend. And I'm enjoying the fact that I did not overwork myself to get it done. I'm glad I got to see my granddaughter and my daughter uh, today. I wish I could see them all, but um, this is getting fun for me. Tomorrow's another day I got off, and we'll just see how far we get. Thanks, and have a good day.